Namaste. So this is a little video about something I noticed the other day in meditation. And that is the different qualities of light in the four states of consciousness. So check this out. Okay, you know there are four states of consciousness. Jagrat, where we're conscious of the world. Swapna, dream consciousness. Sushupti, deep sleep or the void. And Turiya, which is the self, the transcendental consciousness. Now, as far as Jagrat, the light in Jagrat is external and it illuminates reflective objects and then we perceive those objects by the reflected light. At least the light is apparently external <laughs> from the point of view of the body. But in Swapna, dream consciousness, the light is internal and the objects in that consciousness are self-luminous. We perceive those objects without any external light source. And if you think back on your dreams or your imagination, you'll see that all those objects are self-luminous. Now, Sushupti is the void. In other words, there's no light and no objects, even if there was light. So you just see nothing, zero, blank. But in Turiya, Turiya being the self is only light. Light is the subject and light is the object. And this means one sees the self as a non-dual object of consciousness. Now, this is extremely amazing. This allows you to uh, distinguish which level of consciousness you are in during meditation. So just like in Jagrat, worldly consciousness, the light appears to be coming from outside, externally. But that whole state of consciousness is enfolded within dream consciousness, svapna. And then we see that the objects that we experience in so-called waking consciousness are really just projected objects of our dreams. And we have really uh, no separate reality in the so-called world. This is the meaning of, for example, the matrika, where words create forms well, the words are the divisions of forms in consciousness. Remember from uh, Paticca Samuppada that consciousness creates name and form and name and form creates consciousness. It's a feedback loop. And so the names and forms that we have in the background in our ontology, our model of the world, they create the divisions between various phenomena that we perceive as separate objects. But actually, they're not separate. <laughs> anyway, that's the world of illusion, maya, swapna, and jagrat. And then we come to the uh, void. In the void, everything is covered over. There's no light. There's no objects, there's nothing to perceive whatsoever. This is the state of deep sleep, where all the dreams are ended. So, in a way, even though it's usually covered by ignorance when we're sleeping, when we experience it in meditation, it's a kind of awakening. And one feels a higher state of consciousness and realizes that, again, 
the dream and waking consciousness are enfolded within this void. Uh, so this can, if misinterpreted, it can give rise to a kind of nihilism that, oh, there is ultimately just nothing. Uh, but actually it's not so, because there's another state on top of that, Turiya. And in Turiya, something very special happens. The other three states of consciousness become the objects. So in other words, Jagrat, Swapna, and Sushupti, states of consciousness, are the objects of Turiya consciousness. And when we're in Turiya consciousness, there's light and light and light. There's nothing but light. Yet we can see, kind of off in a corner, these areas of darkness. And that's the material world. That's the material consciousness. So, in other words, we can distinguish what state of consciousness we're in by the type of objects that we can view and the type of light that we see in them. Whether it's external and reflected, that means we're in material consciousness, jagra, huh? so-called waking consciousness. Or they are lit from within, and that's either daydreams or night dreams, swapna. And this can be going on at the same time. Huh? Why not? In fact, we experience this every day that we have daydreams and thoughts during the day that are just as insubstantial as our dreams as night. Then there's sushupti. Sushupti is a very special state because nothing is perceived and there's nothing to perceive. There are no objects because everything is in a non-dual state. So we perceive it as simply darkness, emptiness, blackness. But beyond all these three is the Turiya state. And in the Turiya state, we can see the other three states clearly. Because indeed, Turiya is both the source and origin and the overarching boundaries between these other three states. So, for example, when we transfer from waking to sleep, or sleep to waking, or sleep to deep sleep, and back to dreams and again, and so on, there is a time where we're neither in one state nor the other, where we are actually in Turiya. And this is one of the best ways to observe it, in the time just before sleep or just after waking. So this is one reason why it's advised to meditate first thing in the morning, to get up early before sunrise and sit down and watch the mind. And you'll see, you transfer between these states of consciousness. They're sometimes both going at once. Huh? Just like we can uh, sit there in meditation and the body wants to sleep. And so dreams will start. But actually, in between the dreams and waking, we can get a taste of Turiya. Turiya is the state in which we seek both. Actually, all three. Waking, dreams, and deep sleep. And this is the extraordinary state. This is the state of pure light. This is the state where there's nothing but light. Huh? Except over in the corner someplace, there's a little shadow, a little darkness. And that's the other three states of consciousness. <laughs> and of course, this Turiya consciousness, being nothing but light, is also nothing but bliss. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti. Aum.